Thanks for tuning in to another Eastwood Live TV. Uh, with this time of year, it's starting to get a little bit of cold. You know, you're going to be definitely wanting to do the brake lines. They're probably rusted. Um, so we have a large array of tools. Want to be able to go over what we have to sell, what we have to make the best possible uh, lines on your on your vehicle. Now, if you've never tuned in, we have been able to take the questions, uh, either read them over to me. He can also answer them right there. So we can definitely get you answered here uh, while we're live. So let's get started. Uh, a lot of times the brake line is going to come in a coil. As we all know, it's nice, it's compact, but it's not the easiest to work with. Um, so the options we have for you is we're going to have these handheld straighteners, which are going to run from 3 16 inch to 5 8 inch. Uh, they are one per size. So, you know, if you're doing a lot of the same size, they work great. Uh, even HVAC guys like using them because they're convenient, they're small, you can keep them on their truck, straighten out, you know, even your larger lines. Uh, the other option we have if you do a lot of this is going to be uh, a multiple size one that is adjustable. Now this one can do from 3 16 up to half inch. Uh, this can either be vice mounted or you can also bolt it to your bench with the two holes in the bottom. So this is a great option if you do a lot of different sizes and you're moving through um, and want to be able to change on the fly. Just all you got to do is change the tension of this and spin it down to the right amount to get you the straight line. So we'll start off with this one. They're really convenient. They're small. They fit in your toolbox. Don't take up too much room. Um, and if I go to the side that I've deburred, it's a little bit easier. What this is going to do is allow us to come straight out the other side. Roll out. This line apparently has been kinked too many times, but usually they will roll right on through. Let me try straightening it out a little bit to get started as it's been in the Did box. Did you deburr the end of it? Yeah, I should probably grab the deburrs. Well, this is one of the tools I'm showing, which is one of our handheld line straighteners, which is great for if you're in a really small area, you want to just straighten it out while you're on the car or work with it. So that worked really well for me here, because what this is going to allow me to do is now feed this all the way through. And now, as you can see, we're taking it from a coil we're going to push it straight in. You can see how nicely that works. So you can see how, you know, in no time flat, you're taking it from a 20, 25 foot roll and you can go down the entire length of the car. Um, and at this point now you'd be able to grab a hold of your, your line cutter, cut it to the size you need. I'm not going to bore you with that. We've all seen it. Uh, one of the most important tools then to use is going to be to go on to use our deburring tool. Uh, our, our deburring tool allows you to do both the outside, of your line and it also allows you with the uh, recessible part so you can put it away make it so you're not poking anyone you can also clean out the inside uh, this is a very important step with any flare that way the line is nice and clean there's no burrs and the line's going to fold the way it's supposed to when it's being flared um, before we get to these tools these are more of when you're forming it when you're all done quick one on one over our pro flare tool what this is going to allow you to do is make you know, consistent flares over and over again very quickly. Uh, you know, right now I can quickly walk through a flare, show how it's done, and then I can also go ahead and show how very quickly you can make a flare. So we're going to use the 3 16 line today, and what we're going to have is the split die blocks here, which drop in. Now with the double flare, what we want to do is we want to have it so that way we are on the double flare side. You're going to see there's a 45 degree angle on the outside of the split die block that's going to allow the line to push up against it to get the correct size and shape. So once we have that, now what we can do is we can put our line in, which has been deburred, and I'm going to put a little bit of lubrication on it. So what this is going to do is it's going to make your dies last a lot longer when they're pushing on the, the line so you're not pushing it dry. So once you have it in, as Joe can see, I've left a little bit of extra line hanging out on this part right here because it allows you to, while you're doing the different stages, get everything centered up. That way you know that it's in the right spot, it's pushing it, you're not, you don't have too much line, you don't have not enough line, it's perfectly centered. So by leaving a little bit of hang out, it allows me to now flip this lever over, lock it in place and just put a little bit of tension on the line because what I'm going to do now with operation zero, I'll come through, you can watch it get pushed in. So now you can see how everything is nice and straight and level in there. So now I can come around, I can give this a crank down. And then once I know that it's pretty tight, you can come through and finish it off. So now the line won't move. So now we're ready to go to the first option, which is option number one. 
And what this is going to do is it's going to begin to curl the line, getting it ready for the double flare. And the reason I'm showing that is just because it's the most common flare you're going to see on your brake lines. With this tool, you can also do bubble and you can also do single flares. Uh, single flares most commonly found will actually be with the 37 degree flare tool we sell. It's an optional turret because you're going to see that with your AN and your JIC fittings. So now you have it all locked down. We're ready to go through. I'll go slow. You can watch the actual uh, tool go inside and then slowly press in. And you go until you hit a decent amount of resistance. You're going to know when you're at the end. You come back out again. Now at this point, you don't do anything with the line. You don't have to loosen it. All you have to do is just roll around to option two and then bring option two around. And again, you just push until you feel that you have no more push left in it. And now you're all done. So I can pull it out and show you what it looks like. And here you have a really nice uh, double flare. And the nice part about these is they're repeatable. So now what I can do is I can show you how very fast it is, you know, when you're not sitting there taking your time. So if you're making these, you know, in the shop, you're not sitting there changing from, uh, you know, all the different dies in the older style ones where you went one at a time, changed out the dies, flipped it around. With this one, you know, if I'm going just for speed, just go to operation zero, tighten it down, operation one, run through operation one, run through operation two, and that's it. So you can see how very quickly you can make, you know, repeatable double flares over and over and over again, as opposed to the much longer way it used to take. So on to some other tools we have, not so much about the flares. We do have a lot of good videos about the flares. We'd like to see more in depth of how to make all three types. We do have a video out there on this tool. Um, one of the other tools you might want is if you're on the car and you don't have the ability to look for it, it's got to be in a vice. So we also sell an on the car flare tool, which allows you to run the line in through the flare tool. You have your, what's pretty much your operation zero, like you saw me do here, pushes it to the correct depth inside. Then you can tighten it down. And then this tool just utilizes, um, you know, your two different dies on one part. So all you have to do is put it in for the operation one, run it in, turn it around and run it the other way. You can just use standard wrenches and hold this in your hand. Uh, if you had to make one in a bench or in a vise, you certainly can because you could take the handle off this and you could clamp it into a vise if you wanted to as well. So that's, that's one more option for you just to be able to try and make it. Uh, once you've made your flares, you have the car. So you don't want to be able to get, you can't get the line straightener on anymore. You can also use our hand straightening one. You saw how it was very easy to get the, get the line straightened out. And you can just work it down as you need it. Just if you want to make more complex bends where you actually want to make a bend and go around something, uh, we have these forming pliers that, as you can see, have a really nice curve to them. So as you, you know, slowly flex it around, you're not really kinking it, you're not bending it. All you're doing is just putting the radius in it that you want. So this one, you can just sit and work around a little bit at a time. You can make a coil if you have a little bit too much line, as you're probably going to measure because It'd be nothing worse than making all your lines only realize that they're too short. So if you want to make a little coil just to take up that excess, this is a great way to do it. Uh, if you know that you want to make uh, repeatable bends over and over again, one of the other tools we sell here is you can do up to 180 degree bend with your line. Uh, and there are markings on the side which allow you to match those markings up to what's across the face of it. So you can make repeatable bends over and over again with 45s, 90s. So if you want to make a, a, you know, a couple lines that sit right next to each other, you can do it over and over again the same way. So if we were to use this tool, you always want to just pick out the correct channel for the line that you're going to be running. Um, you always want to have a bare minimum of at least an eighth of an inch hanging out the bottom here. What that's going to do is make it so you don't collapse the end of the tube. But then all you got to do, you can just you know, roll it around. Say you want to do a 90, you, know, you just come to right about there, a little bit of spring back. But you can do you know, a nice, perfect 90 degree bend in the line. Um, say you're going around something and you want to change it then to go the other way. Certainly you can put it back in again and you can very easily make yourself you know, repeatable lines over and over again. Get it in. So say you're just going around like a frame rail. Just 
see we can just bend it the rest of the way around now. You see how nice and easy it is just to form the, uh, the line. And this one kinked up a little bit because I wasn't holding it tight. Yeah, um, Richard on Facebook want, wants to know if you can flare bubble flares with that pro flaring tool. Yep, see exactly what it's going to, uh, what it's going to do. So we put it in with the square side. And again, we still are going to start at operation zero. And what operation zero again allows us to do is just to get that nice kind of centered point on it. So now everything's in, I can tighten it down. Now on this uh, turret, a quick, see if Joe can zoom in. There's actually two different spots for operation one. There's operation one that says DIN on it and operation one that says 3 16 the one that says DIN is the one you're going to want for the bubble flare. The, uh, the, the inside of the die is formed just ever so slightly differently. So all we do when we put this on is now this is nice and tight, is we go to the operation one for a DIN flare. And this right here is going to bubble the line exactly the way you want it to bubble. Anything else? Yes, on Facebook, we have one here. Um, your mom wants to know if you're still coming over this weekend for dinner and if meatloaf is okay. okay. Um, let me see here. Robin on Facebook says, um, bought this tool and it works perfect every time. It's a great time saver too. Yeah, it definitely is because you can make those flares over and over and over again, um, repeatable. So you're not sitting there going, okay, am I quite right in there? Do I have the die in right? I mean, this thing is just, as you can see, it's a very fast turret. And you can also see how very easy it is to switch it out with the 37. So if you're doing the AN fittings, the JIC fittings, that's it. Uh, when you do purchase the 37 degree flare, it does come with its own um, split die blocks with the kit. So everything is going to be matched up perfectly for the correct flares. Um, another question, um, can you flare stainless? Yes, uh, with the Pro Flare tool, this one is capable of doing stainless. The on the car model is not. So the only one we currently have that can do stainless is the Pro Flare tool, but it will grip it and it will flare stainless. Um, that's it. All right, well, so just make sure you call your mom. It's, she shouldn't have to hit you up here. Yeah, on definitely video, not. So, you know what I mean? You know, I'll definitely give you a call when we're done here. But, um, just want to be able to show you all the tools. This way, you know, when you're doing your ground or your body off, uh, ground up restorations, that, it's that time of year. We're all going into the garage now, uh, running out of summertime. This is the greatest way from, you know, completely coiled up, not really easy to work with. Run it through the line straightener and you can make all your complex curves you like and flare it on up. So thanks for tuning in. As always, you know, let us know if you have any videos that you'd like to see us do. Definitely take them into account.